Throughout our 35-year history, Diamond Comic Distributors has continuously invested in improvements to our distribution network. Our number one priority has always been to accurately and efficiently distribute comic books and pop culture merchandise to our retail customers all over the globe. That's why we have constantly upgraded our facilities over the years. From our beginnings with a small central hub in Sparta, Illinois, and a network of distribution points across the U.S. and Canada, to our move to Memphis in 2002. And now, since 2008, with our current central hub in Olive Branch, Mississippi, that features over 600,000 square feet of space. It was forecast then that Olive Branch would meet the industry's needs through 2020. But of course, no one could have predicted the tremendous growth the industry has seen over the past few years. While the growth was good news, it presented some serious challenges to our distribution center and operations staffs. With a number of SKUs reaching approximately 45,000, it meant we needed to take immediate action to expand. First, we leased two additional warehouse facilities in Olive Branch, one for overstock products and the other for weekly new product shipments. And we moved our Plattsburgh, New York operations to a new larger facility. By making room in Olive Branch, Diamond could once again work with leading industry experts to reimagine and upgrade our central hub operations and layout. What you are about to see is how our inventory hub and its systems have been updated following an investment of more than $10 million in state-of-the-art distribution equipment and software, plus thousands of warehouse and technical staff hours over 18 months. Here you'll view four main areas of change receiving and slotting of new and restocked product, order picking, order packing, and shipping to our customers. We are excited to show you how Diamond is committed to investment in our industry as we work to meet the needs of our vendors and retailers in a growing market. Let's start at the beginning when product arrives. In our receiving department, we unload containers of toys from overseas, plus pallets and small parcel shipments from our domestic vendors. It's important that this process is efficient and accurate to avoid delays in fulfilling product. New and restocked product is unloaded and separated into individual items. Each item is weighed and measured both individually and as a case. We then use Wi-Fi technology and RF guns to compare what has arrived to packing lists and purchase orders. The products are then received into the hub. Each received pallet is assigned a barcode label that is associated with the product that has been received. This barcode is scanned with an RF gun by our put-away crew. Slotting is the process of assigning a location or bin where the product will be stored. We have integrated cutting-edge slotting software that assigns efficient bin locations for new product load. The put-away operator takes the product to the assigned location and scans the appropriate barcode. Once the product is put into a bin, product fulfillment can begin immediately. This area is seeing the largest changes in this upgrade to our distribution center and its systems. In the past, Diamond picked via discrete order picking. Each order would flow through the entire warehouse, approximately two miles of conveyor before being completed. The computer via voice units told the pickers what size box to use and what to put inside that box and when. As Diamond continued to add SKUs, as well as additional pick modules and conveyor, this meant that each order had to travel further. There was greater potential for dimensional errors and for shipping boxes that were less than full. It also meant that our warehouse management system would use the dimensions of the item to determine what would fit inside each box and that the order of the items in the box was determined by where the item was located in the warehouse. We now utilize a system called Batch, Pick and Put. This strategy is used by leading internet retailers and has been proven to increase both throughput capacity and accuracy while decreasing damages. The first thing that had to be completed was the construction of a 20,000 square foot mezzanine. At the same time, Diamond built a fourth pick module, this one different from the other three, not using flow racking to restock, instead used only to bin small quantities of product. This allows us to store an additional 50,000 SKUs in this module alone that may sell more slowly, so less needs to be immediately available. On the new mezzanine, we have installed a batch consolidation loop, 
a box monorail, 24 put walls, 48 pack stations, as well as an automatic conveyor. At the end of each four level pick module is a conveyor unit that will move product from each module level to the top of the warehouse before it is brought to the mezzanine and sorted. Now let's follow an order's progress through the new pick portion of the batch pick and put system. First, unfilled orders are arranged by the computer for optimum pick travel time and then divided into pick zones. A picker is assigned a pick zone or module level. Up to 20 different orders are picked by pick zone into a single tote. Each picker can pick up to six totes at a time, meaning that one picker can pick up to 120 orders on a single module level in one sequence. These pickers use voice units in conjunction with Bluetooth connected ring scanners. Verify item at location 5136. The voice commands prompt pickers to bin locations to find needed items to pick and how many of an item to pick. Once the item is located, pickers scan the barcode to ensure they've selected the correct thing. After counting the total quantity needed for that item, the voice unit then tells the picker into which tote the item belongs and the quantity that should be put into that tote. The picker counts out the number of items for that tote, scanning the tote to ensure they are putting the correct quantity into the correct tote. Each tote has a box to be used for books. There's also room for product next to the box that is used for merchandise. This helps prevent damages as the tote travels to the mezzanine. Once the entire tote for that level is complete, it is pushed to the middle automatic conveyor and takes the ride to the mezzanine's batch consolidation area. Each tote is then scanned by a user with a headset and a Bluetooth ring scanner, then assigned to a batch consolidation cart. Once the tote is scanned, the voice unit tells the batch consolidation user which cart to put the tote on. The user then scans the barcode assigned to that cart to ensure it is placed on the correct consolidation cart. Once all of the totes for all the pick zones are assigned and consolidated onto the cart, the voice unit then tells the user to bring the cart to an open put wall where the orders are put together. This cart represents all of the orders for 20 Diamond customers. The put wall user logs the consolidation cart into the put wall. See how the lights begin to light up? The user assigns the tray in each cube to the light below it. At this point, the put wall knows exactly what items should go into each cube to fill a customer's order. Each cube has a tray for merchandise and a corrugated plastic bin for books, once again keeping them separate to prevent damages. One tote at a time is taken from the batch consolidation cart. The barcode on an item within each tote is scanned with a handheld wireless scanner that is connected to the put wall. The quantity of each item needed for each order then lights up below the cube. The quantity needed for each order is counted and placed in the cube, and the button is pushed to tell the put wall that the product has been placed in the cube. This continues until every product is scanned, each quantity is assigned to the appropriate cube, and there is nothing left on the batch consolidation cart. As the orders are being filled on the put side of the put wall, lights are also lighting up on the pack side of the wall, letting packers know that the order is complete and ready to be packed. Each packer is signed into a computer at a pack table. As the pack light appears, they scan the tray associated with the cube that was lit. The computer knows exactly how many of each item should be in that cube. The packer makes a decision about the size and type of box to be used to pack the order. Then, much like a grocery store checkout line, each item's barcode is scanned and it moves from the need side of the screen to the packed. Once a box is full, a packout barcode is scanned, a barcode is assigned to the box, and a packing list for that box is printed. The packing list is sealed into the box, and the box with the barcode facing up is placed on the outbound rollers. This continues until each order is fully packed for the put wall and every cube is empty. Then the put wall opens up for another batch consolidation cart to be put into it. Once again, to summarize, the barcode on the item is scanned when the item is picked and put into the tote. The barcode on the item is then scanned when the item is put into the put wall. And finally, the barcode is scanned when the item is packed into the correct size box. 
This triple check helps ensure that the proper items are making their way to the retailers that ordered that product and they are packed as efficiently as possible. While all of this is happening, a ceiling-mounted monorail circulates a stream of empty boxes, which allows workers to focus on picking and packing orders. What if something goes wrong and we don't get all the product at the packing station, or we have too much at the put wall? This is where the hospital comes into play. Also on the mezzanine is an area that has bins for product and bins for orders. If someone gets too much product either at the put wall or at a pack station, that product is brought to this hospital area. The product is adjusted into hospital stock and binned, as there is a high likelihood that another order will need that product. If the packer doesn't have enough of an item, the box that is short is brought to the hospital. The hospital user scans the barcode on the box to find out what is missing, then looks in hospital stock for it. If it is in hospital stock, the product is added to the box, a new packing list is printed, and the box is shipped. If the product is not in hospital stock, an emergency cure order is placed, and the box that is short is binned. Once the cure order arrives, it is scanned and then married with the original order box, a new packing list is printed and the box is shipped. We have also made major upgrades to our shipping area and procedures to accommodate the increased volume that must move quickly through the center. Prior to 2017, boxes were hand sorted with labels applied by users, which left the process open to occasional human error. Our upgrades are designed to eliminate shipping errors caused by sorting and labeling issues. Cases are picked separately, automatically sorted, and go directly to the shipping area, while totes are directed to the batch consolidation area. Packed boxes are then incorporated into the shipping conveyor alongside the case picks, and they make their way under the mezzanine to the shipping system. Because many carriers have changed their rates to be based on dimensional weight, Diamond has invested in an inline dimensional scanner and scale as part of our shipping system. This allows us to record all three-dimensional measurements along with the weight of the box before it leaves the warehouse. Each box goes across the conveyor on the scale and gets scanned. Its dimensions and weight are converted into a shipping label that is automatically applied to the side of the box. Because we have applied a barcode to the top of the box that is unique to that customer's order, our computer system knows exactly where and how to ship that box and the appropriate shipping label is printed and applied automatically. After the label is applied, a second double-check scanner scans both the label on the top of the box and the label on the side to ensure they match before it can go further down the shipping conveyor. We have assigned different carriers and different accounts to certain outbound shipping lanes. At each outbound shipping lane, there is a set of diverting rollers that send the box down the outbound shipping lane they are associated with. At that point, the shipping employee uses an RF scanner to scan the box label and the RF unit shows the employee which pallet location to bring the box. The box is stacked in the appropriate pallet location and the pallet location barcode is scanned to ensure the box was brought to the correct location. Product to be shipped via UPS is directed down its own shipping lane and diverted directly onto a waiting UPS truck. Phase two of this project, currently in progress, is to deconstruct our previous shipping area in order to add even more storage locations to the existing modules, add additional conveyor and staging areas for case picking, and add pallet racking to increase our overstock capacity. We hope that this video helps you understand the scope of the improvements and investments Diamond has made at our Olive Branch Central Hub and facility. With our increased storage and throughput capacity, as well as new shipping procedures, we are committed to increasing order accuracy while reducing damages for our retail customers. Our job will always be to deliver shipments accurately and efficiently to our customers. It's our number one priority, and we will continue to update and innovate to serve the needs of our customers for the next 35 years.